Hello, welcome to Jason Old Millennial. My name is Jason. Speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. In today's video, I'm going to showcase uh, three albums of uh, vinyls that I bought recently with some Christmas Christmas money that I got from my parents. And so I'll show you here on Jason, the Old Millennial. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well here. I think it's a Tuesday afternoon, evening, if I got my days right, yeah. Uh, after you work some night shifts, you forget what days, what day it is sometimes, but um, yeah, doing a video here. Um, uh, this last week or so ago, whenever it was, uh, went home and visited my parents for Christmas, got to open some gifts. Um, uh, always a good time uh, getting Christmas dinner, uh, getting to see all the family, and uh, one of the things I got was uh, some money from my parents. My parents gave me uh, some some money, and uh, I thought, well, I need, you know, what do you do when you get money? Like, put in the bank, invest it? No, I'm going to go buy, just buy some vinyl, of course. <laughs> what else are you going to do when you get money that you didn't earn, that people are just giving to you? They're like, okay, I got to buy something fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun money. Anyway, so I'm very generous. My parents still give me money here at 39 years old. Uh, very generous people, my parents, and I really appreciate them uh, sacrificing and uh, still to this day and uh, giving me uh, some money anyways. And so I went to Barnes and Nobles, which I don't know if that's a place to go to get vinyl, but I thought about going there. It's a little bit, a little bit better vinyl uh, um, choices than Walmart, I would say. I usually go to Walmart looking for vinyl. Uh, one day I'll go to an actual like record store. There's one in Parkland, I think that's 45 minutes away or so, that I know Randy Nelson recommends. So I know someday I'm thinking I, I need to probably go out there to um, to park the Parkland. I might be saying that wrong, uh, but yeah. So um, yeah, someday I'll go there and get them. But this time I went to Martin Noble to see what they got. Uh, I mean, not a huge collection, but um, they definitely had some really good records there that I really wanted. So. Uh, with the money I had, I was able to afford three records, uh, three vinyls. Anyways, and I picked the three, maybe some of my favorite vinyls of all time that I don't have that I really wanted in my collection. So I was very happy to get these. Um, <clears throat> first one, <clears throat> my show, kind of in chronological order actually, is uh, Crowdy Stills and Nash. This is their first album, came out in 1969. Uh, I like this uh, cover. I, I never realized there was a guy looking through the window. Who's that guy? I don't know. I didn't realize, but uh, pretty simple shot there. Just of the three uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash there. Just sitting on a couch outside for some reason. Uh, chilling, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. This is their first album that they came together. It's To me, the Crosby, Stills, and Nash is the first like super group. Uh, all three came from Hall of Fame bands, you know, <clears throat> Nash came from the Hollies, Stills came from Buffalo Springfield, and Crosby came from the Birds. I mean, so you got some really great 60s bands, and three of their members coming together, forming this super group, uh, this trio, and so all three members are able to write songs for it, and uh, Stills was kind of the mastermind behind it all from what I've read, and really was big on producing it kind of in filling in areas he thought needed to be filled basically and he worked all night and getting this album and man this is one of the greatest albums for me of all time it's my favorite Crosby Stills and uh, Nash album by far uh it's crazy how they the first album and they just absolutely knocked it out of the park I mean absolutely amazing music um you got the gatefold here thing right you got the members there wearing some cool must be cold outside got some cool uh coats there <clears throat> take out the track list in here but the track listings it must be someone i'm guessing one of the people must have drew those pictures there and <clears throat> made the artwork but yeah like i said it's absolutely amazing album i mean one of the greatest albums that's not not a beatles album for me uh, absolutely love. Unfortunately, you can't. I don't believe you can still find it on Spotify. Unfortunately, so it was nice getting this album. It's definitely one that was definitely really high on my list of uh, vinyl I really wanted. 
And um, I mean, you start the, the album with Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. I mean, to me, my favorite um, Crosby, Stills & Nash song and one of my favorite songs of all time. It's absolutely amazing song. And it's crazy that it's the very first album. It's a very verse, very first song. And they just hit you with the best song of all time. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm intrigued now with this uh, group. Uh, but yeah, absolutely amazing song. It's interesting because it's a seven minute, 22 second song. It's the longest song on here. It's a, yeah, it's one of those songs that's hard to play on the radio, I'm sure. I think they still did probably, but you know, they probably wanted to cut it down. But uh, yeah, it's longer than a normal song and it's, it's their best one, so it's crazy they hit you with that one right away. Really knock you down. Uh, I always think like this would have been a great closer because of how long it is, and it's just an epic song. It's one of those songs that changes like keys or changes you know tempo three different times. It's almost like three songs put in one. Uh, Stephen Stills wrote it. I mean, absolutely genius masterpiece um, that Stills did there. Uh, and then you got Marrakesh Express, really good Graham Nash song. I really enjoy that. <clears throat> Guinevere, um, Dave Crosby song, really great. Of course, all these songs, amazing harmonies. I'd say this is like, if you like folk rock music, this is like, I think, in the folk rock uh, genre, which I really enjoy. And uh, yeah, some amazing harmonies and absolutely really good uh, guitar playing. Stills is an amazing guitar player. And they had some other, uh, the bass and drummers are really good as well that they added to the group. But yeah, going for absolutely amazing harmonies. You Don't Have to Cry, decent song from Stephen Stills. Uh, Wooden Ships, um, really one of my favorite Crosby, Stills, and Nash songs. I mean, it's like, this is crazy. This is like a greatest hits album. It's like one of those songs, one of those albums that you go, oh my gosh, like there's like so many songs on here that are on the greatest hits albums. Uh, which is just absolutely amazing. First album, and they just hit you with all the greats. Uh, but yeah, Windship's a really good song. Um, Helplessly Hoping, my second favorite Crosby Stills Nash song. Um, it's got the greatest harmonies probably of all time. Uh, and really, I really love the guitar, the acoustic guitar picking in this song. And uh, I love the song so much. Uh, I remember the first time hearing it and just like, what is this? <laughs> this is so amazing. Like I didn't know this existed because I don't think it was a song that was on the radio or anything. I don't remember ever hearing it on the radio when I listened to the oldies or anything, but uh, it was one of those songs I'm like, wow, why is this not like one of the greatest songs of all time that, that are talked about? But yeah, absolutely love Helplessly Hoping. Uh, then Long Time Gone, really good song. And then 49 Bye Byes at the end, just some of the songs on here. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. Really happy I got that. That came out in 1969. Next album I got came out in 1970. This is Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. So we got Crosby, Stills, Nash. It's their second album basically together. But guess what? They add Neil Young. It's like, hey, we already got the Chicago Bulls full of all-stars. Let's add Michael Jordan to the mix um, or something. You know, it's like, it's absolutely insane. Like, um, you already got three really amazing musicians and songwriters. And let's add Neil Young, one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time. To the group, I mean, it was such a great collab collaboration. I feel like Young only did a couple with Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I almost felt like he's almost like a uh, a guest star on on the um, uh, on the band uh, more than really a member. I feel like Chris, Crosby, Stills, and Nash is really the band, and then Neil Young kind of joined in for this album, which is you know, yeah, why not? You know, you got amazing guitar player and also a really good singer, and also a guy who can write amazing songs. And he's already killing it at this point uh, in his solo career. So it's just absolutely crazy they got him on. Um, of course, him and Stills worked together in Buffalo Springfield. So they they already had a relationship as that. And um, anyways, but yeah, really cool. This is, you know, their, their greatest album. Uh, my favorite album there is Crime Stills and Nash and Young. When you add Young to it, uh, very famous album. I know it's always really high on lists of like greatest albums. Uh, I think even more than Crime Stills and Nash. Um, yeah, and this, of course, pretty cool picture. I like, it's a kind of sepia tone. I think they're going for, like, a Civil War style. Uh, especially Stills really went for, it. like, Crosby's pretty cool with that gun there. Um, uh, Neil Young, I don't know, he's wearing, like, a fluffy shirt. I'm not sure if that's a Civil War thing, but, and then Nash just looked like he's wearing regular clothes almost to me, but, uh, still really cool. I love the texture of this, uh, album. It's, I haven't seen an album like this so far where it has this kind of cool texture to it. Anyways, so yeah, pretty cool album cover. Nothing on the back, just the plain thing. But 
Uh, and then you open it up and you, you got tons of pictures of the band doing sometimes crazy stuff. Like, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, something crazy going on there, but uh, pretty cool. I always like these album vinyls. What I love about vinyls, you know, picking up, looking at the artwork and then opening up and seeing more pictures and stuff. Uh, it's really, really cool. Interesting, there's nothing on the back. A lot of times on backs, you put the song list. <laughs> um, nothing on the back, and there's nothing that came with it to say what the songs are. So it's like one of those things where you just have to remember. So, um, but yeah, um, again, it's what's so cool is that all four members bring their own songs into this album. It starts with Carry On, a uh, really good uh, song coming from uh, Stephen Stills. Again, they open with a Stills song. That is really amazing. And when I saw Crosby Stills and Nash live, um, when I saw them in concert back, I think 2005, they opened with Carry On. And it was a great opener to the concert where it's like, they hit you with that Carry On. And it's because the vocals are amazing and uh, the harmonies are amazing and all that. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. So really good opener to the album. Uh, Graham Nash has two really good songs on here with Teach Your Children and Our House. Uh, two more softer songs, I would say. Uh, Teacher Children has almost a country fla uh, flavor to it, a uh, country western like rock flavor to it, or whatever. Um, still really good. I really love Nash. is my favorite out of the group. Usually, uh, he writes uh, really good songs, and he has really great uh, tenor, high tenor vocals that really work, work well with the group when he harmonizes. But um, Crosby, I'm not as crazy about. It. Um, I almost cut my hair. Is a song I hear it seems like. That's his most popular song, maybe. I don't know. I've never been f a big fan of that song, but I know that's one I've heard before. Um, and then uh, Deja Vu, the title song, also coming from Crosby, is a really good song. I, it's my favorite song coming from uh, David Crosby from this group. Uh, and uh, yeah, a really interesting song. Very uh, complex song, I think. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, like I said, Stills Brain brings Carry On. Um uh, and then I'm already forgetting what the other song is. I know he brought another song in. Um, and then Neil Young brought in Helpless, which is probably my favorite Neil Young song coming from the group. Uh, really great song, of course. Amazing Neil Young vocals. Oh, Guinevere. Guinevere's on here. Guinevere, or no, that was on the other. Never mind. That was on the other one. I forget. I'm already trying to think of what was on this album because I don't have the track list in front of me. Uh, but yeah, uh, Helpless is a really, really great uh, song. I love Neil Young's. Uh, high vocals on there um and the rest of the group he sings the verses and the rest of the group comes on the chorus absolutely beautiful anyway still just a really really solid album uh another album one of my favorites really happy to get in onto my collection and then last one but not least i got who's next the great who album which came out in 71 so i have 69 70 71 i mean some of the greatest albums of that period in my opinion, I got, and yeah, this is definitely was one I had to get on vinyl at some point. I was like, there's certain, there's certain albums, like I, I do CDs too, but I feel like the, the really big, big albums that I really love, like I, I think of like, man, I really want to get this on vinyl because I feel like that's where it belongs. Like that's where it came out on vinyl probably originally. And that's where people you originally like heard, heard it, even though this isn't original, like pressing, whatever. But so I just feel like I'm owning a piece of like rock history, you know, with, with these vinyls that I absolutely love. Uh, but yeah, absolutely amazing. By far my favorite Who album, doesn't doesn't even come close. This actually is the only one I've got now that has like a back, uh, it's a kind of interesting picture of them. I don't know what they're doing, some kind of basement, but it has the track list in here. So it's nice to have the track listing on there and go, okay, remembering what was on here. Um, but yeah. One of the greatest rock albums of all time. It's definitely high on my list. My top 100 favorite albums. I'll definitely get to it. All three of these albums I haven't gotten to yet on there. And they were coming up. Um, anyways, but yeah. You start with Baba Harali. I mean, amazing opener. Uh, just a cool intro. Um, definitely very memorable. Uh, and then you got Bargain coming after that. Really, really good rock song coming right after that. You know, Love Ain't For Keeping, I think it's pretty good. Um, song is over. I really like, and um, then side two starts with getting in tune. I really like that song. Um, almost kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, underrated songs on here. They're more softer songs. You know, the song the, who's known for their rock, they're really good at rock and they're gonna really rock it out. But I like some of these softer songs, and uh, yeah, this album's really one where I thought, man, 
Roger Daughtry was an okay singer. And then he, you listen to this and you go, Roger Daughtry is a really good singer, like rock singer. And he, he puts out some of the best vocals, I think. And in this, I mean, you can say Tommy, I think uh, he really showed his vocal, um, how good he is. And that came out, I think the year before, or it came out in 1969, uh, somewhere on there. And this is 71. So Tommy in this, I think Roger Daughtry is just totally nailing it vocally. I mean, he's just going up another level in my opinion, which makes it so, so good. Going mobile, but going mobile, I really like. I feel like a lot of people don't like that song, but I, I actually quite enjoy that. Behind Blue Eyes, another great song that has a mixture of kind of a soft ballad almost, but then turns into a really good rocker. Uh, but excellent song. And then you end with, I think, the greatest rock song of all time, Won't Get Fooled Again. Uh, great, I mean, this is one of the best opening closers to an album I've ever seen. I mean, opening with Bob O'Reilly, close with Won't Get Fooled Again, I love Won't Get Fooled, Won't Get Fooled Again. I mean, it's a it's one of my favorite songs of all time. Like I said, I think it's a greatest rock song. I mean, never have I heard a song. I've heard it so many times, and I still get blown away. Every time I listen to it, I'm just, like, amazed by what they do in it. I mean, never before I heard, you know, Townsend just killing it on guitar, Entwistle on the bass, and then Moon on the drums. All three are just amazing musicians, and all three instruments are just doing their own thing and working together at the same time. And you listen to it and you just go, wow, that's a great bass. That's a great drumming. You know, that's great guitar work. And it's like, I've never heard a song where all three just are just absolutely at the top of the game uh, like this, like the best I've ever heard of all three. And then you got Roger Daughtry giving you the greatest rock scream of all time. I mean, yeah, I don't know how he does it without, I don't know how, I don't know how to scream without, you know, you know, ruin your vocals or something, but he gives, he gives two screams. Second one, just, oh my God, like, it's just amazing every time I listen to it. And, uh, yeah, it definitely, this song definitely makes this one of the greatest albums just because you have this on here. But like I said, with some of these other ones are, aren't, aren't bad either. There's some, uh, three big ones, I think. And then all the other ones I think are actually pretty good too. So yeah, definitely up there. One of the greatest albums of all time. Who's next? Definitely happy when I saw that. I was like, I got to get who's next. Cause that has to be in my collection. But yeah, so those are the three albums I picked up with my Christmas money. Uh, very happy about that. And so, yeah, common, uh, you have these albums. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you do. They're really popular. Um, give your, you like to hear your opinion. What do you think about them? Uh, good choices. Do you think, uh, to get, <laughs> um, yeah, so I love that read. I'll read the comments and comment back and just thank you to everybody for watching this video. Thank you for liking it. And just thank you to all the subscribers for supporting the channel. I appreciate all of you and I hope you have a good day.